What is AVAX? I've talked to so many people that spend a ridiculous amount of time and money trading cryptos like Avalanche, but they don't even know the real utility of the token or why it exists. Knowing why AVAX is a top 10 coin will help you better understand the long-term potential and if you should buy, hold, or sell Avalanche. And AVAX has some really cool features. But first, I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm the DeFi Whale, and I've made millions in crypto. And this channel is my chance to give back to you. If you like the video, subscribe and stick around because the more that you learn, the more that you increase your opportunity to earn in the world of crypto. In this video, we're going to cover what is the Avalanche Network? What makes it different? And what does the future of AVAX look like? But to understand where we're at now, let's start by looking at our history. And this is where AVAX really shines. On a quick history, over the past 45 years of distributed systems, there have been only three approaches to the consensus problem. Classical, Nakamoto, and Avalanche. Classical came out 45 years ago, and we're going to talk more about this later because it is important to understand the base foundation of AVAX features today. Then, 2009, Satoshi Nakamoto came out with the proof of work model when he or she created Bitcoin. Then, fast forward to 2020 when AVAX came out with the Avalanche consensus model. But remember, there are thousands of cryptos, but there are only three consensus model. And in crypto, Bitcoin and AVAX are two of these differentiated consensus model. And when you look at Avalanche consensus, let's break it down because it can get confusing. To start off, just forget about the word AVAX and just focus on the word consensus. You may have heard consensus vote before where everyone agrees on the same thing. Basically, not a single person votes against it. And in AVAX land, consensus means by which a series of independent voters, which are called validators, come to an agreement on a decision. So a consensus vote is where everyone votes on the same thing and they vote on the same side of whatever that decision is. And the process sounds pretty straightforward, right? You figure out if a piece of data is consistent with the rules of the AVAX system and whether the rest of the network agrees with their assessment. Avalanche facilitates this agreement that's made. And we're going to learn more about how Avalanche actually works. And to do that, let's first quickly cover classic protocols as well as how Bitcoin works. These will help us understand the fundamentals of Avalanche. So to start, let's talk about the classical protocol. Remember, this came out 45 years ago. And the classical protocols are known as practical Byzantine fault tolerance or PBFT and hot stuff are all based on all to all voting. What this means is the validator needs to hear from a huge set of nodes to come up with a decision. And these systems are super fast, but they don't scale well in the number of participants. Now listen to this, the most scalable classical model that is one that I mentioned hot stuff. And it was incidentally designed by Ted Yin, who is now working on the Avalanche protocol. So the fastest, most scalable protocol, classical protocol, was created by the same person that's working on the Avalanche protocol today. And this is what was going to be used on Facebook Libra when they're coming out with that. But the problem is that this protocol only supports 100 validators before the performance begins to suffer. Avalanche today has over a thousand validators and I'm going to drop a link to the live current active number of validators in AVAX's network below if that's something that interests you. And while you're there, if you could validate this video by giving us a like, that would mean us a whole lot. Every like helps us out to continue creating amazing content like this for you guys. Now let's fast forward to 2009 when Nakamoto came out with Bitcoin and the Nakamoto consensus. And with Nakamoto-based protocols, instead of waiting for 
all nodes in the network with absolute certainty to decide on the same exact thing. Nakamoto trades off an indistinguishable difference in probability that allows for greater scalability. Let me, let me say that again. What Nakamoto did is he said, we're going to allow a super, super small margin of error, but what that's going to in turn do is allow us to actually scale unlike the classical protocols. This small difference is what launched Bitcoin and the whole entire blockchain technology. While classical protocols basically need the certainty to equal exactly zero, meaning the probability of the outcome is 1.0. Nakamoto allows for some super tiny amount of error, meaning if a classical model is P equals one, then Nakamoto's model is probability equals minus one minus E, where that E is just a super small error. And as more blocks are created, the error value actually becomes more and more marginal. So you take this and you say, we have fixed classical consensus, right? Well, not exactly. This is a huge breakthrough. And when it happened in 2009, 2009, over a decade ago, this happened. I'm pretty sure VHF, VHS tapes were still used in 2009. This protocol is the modern in the modern world has its disadvantages. It uses a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time to finalize a transaction or to reach that product's project's finality. Now we're going to talk about the difference in finality time later, but basically the fundamentals we want to know right now are Nakamoto's consensus is scalable, but it's not quick like classics consensus. So why can't we have the best of both? Enter Avalanche. To put it simply, Avalanche works smarter, not harder than the other two systems. For one, while well, Nakamoto's system has miners that are constantly creating new blocks, think of the millions of Bitcoin miners that are out there, and those machines that are mining those new blocks are always working. AVAX only works to complete transactions when they arise, and when those do arise, validators get to work. Now to start, let's talk about what a validator actually does in Avalanche consensus. Avalanche is a voting protocol. Validators listen for transactions. And when they hear a transaction, validators vote on whether a transaction is to be accepted. And if it's not to be accepted, it's to be marked as rejected. So it's really pretty simple. Let's, let's look at it in a different way. A validator makes an initial decision. Once that validator make, makes the initial decision, the validator goes to the rest of the network to determine if everyone agrees with that decision. And this is exactly what happens on classical validators as well. But with AVAX, this happens on a much, much higher validator count. To dive deeper, AVAX does this by a process of repeated random subsampling or subsample voting. This is just the term that's used. What it actually means is the initial validator that gets that decision confronted with them, they randomly select and ask other validators if they agree. The initial validator does this over and over again until a high probability of being correct is reached. The decision that's made is final or accepted. One way to think about this, imagine that you have a family of 10 and a concert comes up that's gonna be in your area and you now have this decision confronted with you. You're that initial validator and you now have to go to your family and you have to say, hey family, do we want to go to this concert or not? The classical model would say, everyone has to say absolutely yes, but you have 10 people in your family. So you've gotta to go to everyone and make sure everyone says yes. So what AVAX does is you randomly go to people in your family and then once you have a high probability that everyone's going to want to go, you go ahead and make the decision to go. For example, you get eight yeses in a row, then you go ahead and say, we're going to go to the concert. This is obviously a huge oversimplification, but it shows that there's room for some margin of error. Now, let's go into what this means for attacks. AVAX with this system is actually much less vulnerable to attacks, where Bitcoin, you would need... 51% of all devices on the network to attack Bitcoin. And even Ethereum, you would need 51% of all tokens on the network to attack Ethereum. While both of these are super unlikely, it just really showcases 
that it has vulnerability versus AVAX, where you need 80% of all the network in order to attack AVAX. And if you talk about the classical PBFT, you would need 33% control of the network to perform an attack. But again, that was 45 years ago. But it shows the difference in how we've evolved from PBFT to Bitcoin and Ethereum and now to AVAX. And let's talk about speed as well. AVAX allows 4,500 transactions per second per subnet with a finality clock of three seconds. Now that comparatively, when you're looking at Ethereum and Bitcoin, Ethereum allows for 15 transactions per second with a 10 minute finality. So that 15 transactions is huge, hugely smaller than the 4,500 transactions that's allowed on AVAX with a much longer potential finality clock. And Bitcoin is even slower. Bitcoin has an allowance for seven transactions per second with a one hour finality. So you can see the natural progression where Bitcoin came out with this new technology that was groundbreaking. And then Ethereum built on top of it and said, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be done better. We're going to be able to do this at a much over double the transactions per second. And we're six times better finality clock. So Ethereum, everyone talks about, you know, this, this moment in time where Ethereum is going to surpass Bitcoin. But when you look at AVAX, look at the difference. 4,500 transactions over 15. Three seconds instead of 10 minutes. The difference is huge. And Ethereum is working to improve that now. So Ethereum has a lot of credibility now. And as they continuously to improve to get to or above AVAX's level, that's going to be most likely the best token. But in the meantime, AVAX has done something really, really, really smart. They didn't just build the best consensus model to date. They also built their model knowing that Ethereum has the most active projects on it. So what AVAX did is they used C chain on their primary network, which is the exact same that Ethereum uses. This makes it so that developers can easily transfer their projects onto AVAX. So from a user perspective, why not use AVAX when it's way cheaper and way faster? From a developer perspective, why not widen my potential user base by having my project exist on both Ethereum and Avalanche, particularly as Avalanche grows, there's more and more incentive for me to put my project on both Ethereum and Avalanche. So long as Avalanche continues to be the better performing, better speed and everything above, I'd rather use AVAX over Ethereum, particularly when AVAX cost me a couple pennies to do a transaction and Ethereum could cost you up to $100. Lately, Ethereum's prices have gone down, but they've shown that potential to be extremely expensive. And this whole concept of developer feasibility combined with the most robust consensus solution makes AVAX a crypto powerhouse that it is today. And let's talk a little bit about the tokenomics of AVAX. AVAX has a cap of 720 million coins. This means that AVAX will become deflationary. And as of June 2022, almost half of these coins have been produced. And I want you guys to know that none of this is financial advice. However, I do hope that you learned something in this video. And I really hope that we can see you in the next video.